University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index relapsed, relapsed. So we're back into deep COVID and 08, 09 territory in terms of the sentiment index. And it makes sense. It's that regional bank crisis. It's consumers saying, wait a minute, what's going on? Are we safe? Are we safe in our banks? That's a big one, right? Uh, so, and, and it was a big drop and a big surprise. The other thing in that report was consumers saying, I think in, uh, inflation's going up. Uh, and I think one of the reasons for that was gasoline prices did go up. And the consumer is railing against price increases. And that's why we think uh, a lot of companies are going to start cutting prices. After weeks of talks and warnings of potential economic disaster, the White House and congressional leaders in the United States have reached a deal to increase the debt ceiling, one that lawmakers now must turn into law before the U.S. defaults on its obligations. The crisis and its resolution have been months in the making. They trace back to the November 2022 midterm elections, which saw Republicans win a narrow majority in the U.S. House of Representatives, depriving President Joe Biden's Democratic Party of the ability to pass legislation on its own. The agreement negotiated by Biden and Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy would suspend the debt ceiling for two years and cap government spending during the same period. The U.S. dollar rose on Friday after May's non-farm payrolls report showed employment numbers surged, while traders weighed the merits of the U.S. Federal Reserve possibly skipping a rate hike in June. The report showed that payrolls in the public and private sectors increased by 339,000 in May, far outstripping the 190,000 forecasts on average by economists Paul by Reuters. May's jump followed a 253,000 rise in April. In this video, Kathy Wood explores the debt deal, fiscal policy, monetary policy, and the various indicators of the path the economy would be taking moving forward. It would be rewarding to carefully listen to the video as Wood does justice to the various aspects of the economic front. As you watch, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and drop your comments below. We have a debt deal now uh, that uh, President Biden is going to sign. We're not going to have to worry about this until early 2025. They're taking this off the table uh, for uh, election year campaign season, uh, and it makes sense. Um, it's astonishing how fearful the market was of default, though. Credit default swaps uh, on U.S. sovereign debt uh, rose at its peak uh, to uh, 325, 325. Um, now, this is uh, an insurance, the price of an insurance policy against default. So it it went up to 325, and uh, within the last few days, it's down to 10. Uh, so the, the fear out there was extreme, and the market is enjoying the stock market uh, some, uh, some of a, a relief rally associated with that fear going away. M2 uh, officially now uh, dropped 4.6% on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, in April. And we think that it will continue uh, to accelerate to the downside. We think it'll be down 5% or more in, in May. Um, I'll, I'll say it again. It is shocking to me that the Fed never talks about money supply. Um, I, I, I was early in my career when Fed Chairman Volcker was focused on inflation and all we talked about was money supply. So quite a big difference. So the question now is, is the Fed going to pause? And we keep getting uh, different stories from different Fed governors and presidents and so forth. Um, if you look at the two variables that the Fed has focused us on, uh, employment, and you look at the headline numbers, including today's, we'll get into that in a moment, um, you'd say, no way are they going to pause. They're going to keep, keep lifting rates. Employment is too strong. Um, if you look at the details inside today's report, and maybe I will go through that now, you'll see that uh, they may be having second thoughts. Uh, while the headline number, non-farm payroll, was up 339,000, I believe, 
um, much stronger than the 250 to 280,000 expected. Um, the another number, which is actually a leading indicator of employment, but it's buried deep, deeply into the report, is called household employment. So payroll employment is a survey of corporations. Household employment is a survey of households. According to Woods, the surge in payrolls indicates the labor market remains robust and may pose difficulties for Federal Reserve officials who were largely hoping to pause interest rate increases at their June 13 to 14 meeting. The move up in the unemployment rate may support that decision, though. Should labor market strength continue, they could raise rates in July. The report on the surface looks strong, but it shows that wages are not exploding they're beginning to moderate. In terms of the Fed, it doesn't change the prospects of the Fed skipping in June, which means they will skip and leave the door open for a rate hike at the next meeting, she said. The Fed is going to have some interesting statistics, we think, in the next couple of months. Um, and, and it's mostly because of what happened last year as opposed to this year. It looks like the CPI is, going, is settling into the 0.1 to 0.3 range. The comparison from last year uh, for May was 0.9, and for June it was 1.2. That's month to month. Uh, so we're going to be dropping off some big numbers here, and we wouldn't be surprised to see uh, the number in July, reported in July for June, to be around 3%. And to give you a sense of that, a year ago, June, the number on a year-over-year -year basis was 9. So 9 to 3 within one year's time. And we think the evidence is brewing that that number is going to continue down and probably will go negative. And when the Fed recognizes that that is the case, as, the, as we believe they will. There are all kinds of leading indicators, which I'll share with you in a minute. Uh, then it is going to change its tune. And uh, by that time, we're probably going to see more increases in the unemployment rate. So today we got uh, an increase from 3.4% to 3.7%. Uh, and the reason was that household measure fell 310,000, while the labor force, so the people out there looking for work, actually increased by nearly 150,000 people. Uh, so that's a three-tenths of an increase uh, in, in the unemployment rate. The other negative piece of news from an, ec uh, an economic activity point of view was that the work week shrank by 0.3%. Uh, and that has a disproportionate impact. It doesn't sound like a, a lot. 0.1 hours equals 0.3%. But it does have, it is a depressant on uh, economic indicators. Uh, and in fact, if you look at uh, total hours worked uh, in the economy, they have essentially been flat to slightly down now since January. Uh, so there are a number of employment-related indicators that are suggesting weakness, even though there are others, like the JOLTS index, job openings soared in the last month. Uh, initial claims started coming down again. Uh, the, the Challenger job survey, uh, that one showed that layoffs surged 287% year over year. These are lay layoffs of um, their reductions in force, so a, a layoff of a group of people at, at, uh, at the same time. So we're getting all kinds of conflicting uh, indicators, which is, again, typical at turning points. And you'll know I've been using that phrase, turning points, for a while now. And one of the reasons for that is it does feel like we've been through rolling recessions, housing and autos, um, two negative GDP quarters uh, in, the, in the first half of last year. Uh, and, um, and so it feels like this is one heck of an extended uh, uh, turning point in, in, in the economy. 
President Biden praised a bipartisan agreement that raised the debt ceiling and averted a calamitous debt default in a rare Oval Office speech Friday. He outlined how close the economy was to being thrown into a recession. He said millions of Americans would have lost their jobs. There were extreme voices threatening to take America for the first time in our 247-year history into default on our national debt, the president said. Nothing. Nothing would have been more irresponsible. Nothing would have been more catastrophic. The nearly 15-minute address served as a victory lap for the president after the Senate passed the legislation he negotiated with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy to raise the debt ceiling for two years and cut federal spending. No one got everything they wanted, but the American people got what they needed, he said. In what appeared to be a nod to one of their key arguments for re-election, Biden underscored the type of steady leadership he asserts he can continue to provide in comparison to some of the partisan fighting being waged by more hardline Republicans, including leading Republican candidates for president. Passage of the bipartisan bill comes just days ahead of when Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned that the government would begin to run out of money to pay its bills. It also ends months of tensions in Washington after Republicans refuse to raise the debt limit unless Biden and the Democrats place more restrictions on federal spending. Biden even considered invoking the 14th Amendment of the Constitution to keep making payments on the nation's debt, but ultimately determined there was not enough time left before a looming deadline to use the untested strategy. According to Kathy Wood, many companies are planning to start cutting prices to draw on consumers. She also mentioned that the economic activity in the U.S. manufacturing sector continued to contract at an accelerating pace in May, with the ISM manufacturing PMI dropping to 46.9 from 47.1 in April. This reading came in worse than the market expectation of 47. The U.S. dollar came under renewed selling pressure after this report, and the U.S. dollar index was last seen losing 0.4% on the day at 103.82. What do you think will be the market reaction to the debt ceiling bill? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.